Good evening to all of you. I am audible or not? Yes, ma'am, you are audible. Okay, a very good evening to all of you and hope you all are hale and healthy. So we are going to start with the uh, uh, part of the food technology that is grain process technology. So today in this lecture, we are going to cover the structure of the cereal grains. And if the time uh, remains or it is left, then we will also discuss the milling of wheat. So should I start with today's lecture? Are you all yes, okay? Comfortable? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma okay, okay. So we will start. So today's lecture's topic is structure of the cereal grains. First of all, before discussing the structure of cereal grains, we should know what do we mean by cereals. So uh, cereals uh, come under the category of plants uh, which yield edible grains. And this includes various crops like rice, wheat, corn, barley, oats, and uh, millets, they come under minor grains. So these cereal grains, these are the uh, fruit of the plants and they belong to the family, that is the grass family, that is gramini. And uh, uh, they are the most important or they are the major contributor to the food calories which we consume. And uh, apart from it, these cereals, these are quite easy to store because they have low moisture content they can be handled easily and they also uh, give a variety to our diet. So the major cereal grains which are grown in India are wheat, rice, corn, sorghum and barley and oats are also there. So as we uh, generally talk about the composition of the cereal in general, it is not uh, in relation to any particular cereal grain in general, they consist about two third of the carbohydrates. That is around 70 to 80% of uh, the cereal grains. It is comprised of carbohydrates and these are mainly present in the form of starch or in the form of digestible sugars. And uh, these grains, they are also a good source of protein, calcium, iron, vitamin B complex and dietary fiber. So the cereal grains uh, overall, they contain about 10 to 14 percent moisture, 58 to 72 percent that is carbohydrate, around 8 to 13 percent protein, but they may contain up to 18 percent protein and 2 to 5 percent fat and 2 to 11 percent is the indigestible fiber. So on an average, they provide around 300 to 350 kilocalories per 100 gram. And one important thing is that these cereals, these are deficient in vitamins A, D, B12, and C. So if we talk about energy, so uh, they are considered to be the cheapest as well as the excellent source of energy because the majority of it, it contains carbohydrates. And uh, you can very well understand the significance of cereal because it is the first thing which is added to a infant diet. So they are very important for our body and they provides around 70% of the daily energy intake that is because of the carbohydrates. Then next thing is the protein. They contain around uh, uh, 6 to 12 gram or 6 to 15 gram of protein per 100 gram. And uh, they are able to meet around 50% of our daily protein requirement. One important thing about cereal is they lack the essential amino acids, lysine, threonine, and tryptophan. This is very important and it is usually asked in the exam. So they lack these essential amino acids, but 
they are rich in sulfur containing amino acids that are methionine and cysteine and that is why it is advised to be um, to take these cereals in combination with pulses legumes or the milk products because the legumes they are deficient in sulfur containing amino acid that is methionine but cereals they are rich in this amino acid that is methionine so that ways they form a complete diet when taken in combination so that is why they should be like uh, for example khichdi is there so khichdi is prepared with rice and the moong dal so the basic reason is that rice it lacks methionine uh sorry uh, that moong dal it lacks methionine but rice it is rich source of methionine so that ways they form a complete diet so that is why they should be it is advised they should be taken in combination then comes the minerals so uh, minerals uh, like we uh, usually do the ash content so ash content is uh indirect estimation of the mineral present in these cereals so this ash content it varies from 0.6 to 3.3% and usually the husk of cereals is rich in minerals so in uh, minerals uh, calcium and iron they are present in limited amount but in case of millets like rye is there ragi is there or oats they are considered to be very good sources of calcium but as you know there is one or two things bad with some good things so in case of the cereal grains uh, phosphorus is stored in the form of phytin which is considered as a anti nutritional factor also because uh, it uh, affects the bioavailability of the minerals in our body so phytin it is also known by the name that is myo or inositol hexakis phosphate it is very important it is the second name of phytin and uh, uh, phosphorus is stored in the form of phytin and this phytin it has a very uh, good or it has good affinity uh, for these metallic ions for example calcium is there iron is there zinc manganese magnesium and it leads to the formation of some complexes which are insoluble in nature that ways they bind these uh, uh, cations and they make them unavailable to our body so we may think that we have consumed so much of this thing and that ways we matlab uh, our uh, diet is fulfilling the daily requirement of calcium or iron but uh, the hidden factor is that this phytin it combines with them to form the complex compounds and make them unavailable to our body so on a whole if we see a grain there are three main important parts number one is the bran that is the outermost covering and uh, this bran it is a very good source of minerals it is a very good source of fiber also and there are some amount of minerals also present in bran then is the endosperm which is the main part and it contains mainly carbohydrates and proteins and the third important part is the germ or the embryo so it is quite nutrient rich it contains certain antioxidants also it is a very good source of vitamin e vitamin b complex and some healthy fats are also present in the germ so if we see uh, we can designate it as beg b e g b is bran e is endosperm and g is the germ or the embryo it may be known by the name germ or embryo so bran it is the edible or outer protective layer of a seed and it is a very good source of fiber and vitamins as well as minerals also then comes the endosperm it is quite rich in starch and protein and then is the germ it is the reproductive part of the plant and it is rich in vitamins minerals proteins as well as some healthy fats are also present so this is again 
like bran layer it contributes to 14% of the grain endosperm it is uh, it contributes 84% and germ it contributes 2% so this is a, a table which depicts the proximate composition of various cereal grains and here uh, you can see most of the cereal grains they are providing uh, energy or their calorific value is usually higher than 310 and it ranges up to 360 like in case of corn it provides 352 calories and the lowest one is the oats and rice, which provides 310 kilocalories per 100 gram of the uh, grain. So this is the proximate composition. And now uh, one by one, we will discuss the composition as well as the structure of the various grains. So first and foremost is the wheat. As in North India, it is a general practice we consume more of wheat as compared to rice. So first we will discuss uh, wheat. So if we talk about wheat taxonomy, it belongs to the tribe TTCA and it is one of the largest or most important tribes in the grass family that is known by the name Poesi. Then another important point is the basic chromosome number in wheat is seven. It is denoted by a small x, it is seven. So on the basis of these number of chromosomes, these are divided into three categories. So one is uh, like uh, diploid, then tetraploid, and then hexaploid. Diploid, as you all know, that means two. So it contains two n number of chromosomes that is equal to 2x that is 2 multiplied by the basic number of chromosomes which come to 14. So the wheat species uh, generally which contains the diploid uh, number of chromosomes or which are diploid it is triticum monococcum. Then it is tetraploid. Tetraploid means tetra means four times. So it is four times the basic number of chromosome that is four into seven, that is 28. And the example is triticum durum, which is used to prepare pasta products and simolina. And then is the hexaploid. Hexa means six. So that is six times the basic number of chromosome that is six into seven. It is equal to 42. And the example of it is triticum estivum. Hope it is clear to you. Um, yes, ma'am. Okay. So uh, these are the various varieties of wheat which are hexaploid, tetraploid or diploid in nature. For example, we will be more uh, uh, commonly, the commonly used wheat variety that is the triticum estivum that is also known as uh, from which we prepare chapati. So that is hexaploid in nature or uh, like triticum vulgare is there, triticum spelta is there. So these are all hexaploid beads. Then comes the tetraploid. Tetraploid is triticum durum, triticum diacocum, then is triticum persicum. And uh, about the diploid wheat, the common example is triticum monococcum. So the Majorly cultivated uh, the various wheat species are triticum durum. So triticum durum is the second most widely cultivated wheat today. And this is generally used for the preparation of the pasta products. Then comes the incorn or the triticum monococcum. It is a deployed wheat and it is wild uh, variety. And uh, it was cultivated earlier, but nowadays it is very rarely grown. Then comes the common wheat or the bread wheat, like I told you from which we uh, prepare chapatis, that is triticum estivum. So this triticum estivum, it is a hexaploid species and it is the most commonly uh, cultivated or grown variety of wheat. Then emmer wheat is also there, it is tetraploid and uh, it was also grown in earlier periods and then spelta it is hexaploid species and it is also it is grown in limited quantities so the most common are the first three that is triticum durum triticum monococcum 
and then is the triticum st1 so this indian wheat uh, if we talk about how the indian wheats are classified it is a uh, if in general we talk about it is an irony that we don't know what kind of wheat variety is suitable for what kind of product which is prepared from it for example like if i talk about the bread it should be prepared from hard wheat which contains higher amount of gluten like if i talk about bread uh, biscuits or cookies they should be prepared from soft wheat which contains lower amount of gluten or lower amount of protein so usually it is not known to the common people and whatever the wheat variety which uh, which is available in the market they buy and they get it milled and converted into flour and they consume it without knowing whether it is suitable for bread or it is suitable for biscuits or cakes or cookies so um, i think ke this will be clear from uh, the coming slides ke which variety is suitable for what so these indian wheat varieties they are uh, they can be soft they can be hard they can be medium hard also and they can be hard also so this soft medium hard or hard wheat it depends upon the amount of the protein which is present in it for example bread wheat it contains 14% or above protein if i talk about medium hard wheat so it contains around uh, 9 to 12% and if i talk about soft wheat so then it is less than 9 it may contain 7 to 8% of the protein so the three species uh, of these wheats are like triticum st1 is there triticum durum and triticum diacocum so the major uh, if you see this table so majority of the grown uh, wheat species it is occupied by triticum estivum then second number is triticum durum and thereafter triticum diacocum so as i was discussing about the types of the wheat so first comes the hard wheat so hard wheat it has high gluten content now uh, sometimes there is some confusion between the protein content and the uh, gluten content so initially when i was also uh, studying the post graduation then i also thought that gluten and protein is one and the same thing but i was mistaken at that time so a uh, protein is which is present as a dry matter and if i say gluten so gluten is produced when the proteins are hydrated so it is hydrated protein that means gluten will develop when we add water to the flour and we convert it into dough then the gluten will develop so gluten it is the viscoelastic protein which is present in the flour it which is present in the wheat flour so this hard wheat they have high gluten content that ways they will be having high protein content also their protein quantity and quality is also superior and uh, uh, when uh, this hard wheat is milled so these endosperm cells endosperm is uh, that is starch and protein so they separate along the cell wall and they can be easily sifted they have high extraction yield also and they have a vitreous endosperm and in this the starch granules they are tightly packed inside a protein matrix so uh, when we go for milling so some of these starch granules they get damaged that is known as damaged starch content so this damaged starch it helps in absorbing water because starch has high affinity for water that leads to high water absorption capacity of these hard wheat varieties then another factor is that the bran it can be easily separated and they have high water absorption capacity am i clear regarding this what uh, is hard wheat and why they have a uh, high water absorption capacity is it clear to you ma'am what does this vitreous endosperm means they uh, means here vitreous means it is quite hard so uh, one thing you remember because whenever uh, we are doing milling so there is shear force as well as impact force is also uh, that is there 
so that ways this uh, endosperm it will disintegrate and if it disintegrate then uh, some of the starch granules they will be damaged so that ways it is a hard thing so uh, a high energy inputs are required to convert them into smaller uh, fl flower particles flower yes so that is like vitreous that means quite hard and in this the damaged starch content will be high and this uh, high damaged starch content it is suitable for bread because in bread uh, we require 7 to 9 percent uh, damaged starch so that is required and that is why they have high water absorption capacity uh, i think it is clear to you now yes ma'am okay so we move to the next slide then comes the soft wheat so uh, soft wheat as the hard wheat it contains uh, high gluten content so in case of soft wheat it has low gluten content and uh, uh, low gluten content means their uh, protein content is uh, around uh, 8 or uh, 9% uh, 7 8 9% so these have lower extraction rate and this uh, uh, when you take the flour of hard wheat and soft wheat, then you can see the difference because soft wheat flour is fluffy in nature as compared to the hard wheat. Now, uh, we can correlate this thing because that is a hard wheat. So, the particle size is quite uh, bigger as compared to the soft wheat uh, flour. So, that way uh, that uh, flour particle, hard wheat flour particle, they have more mass or weight. So, they will settle down easily. But soft wheat uh, variety wheat flour, they are quite fluffy in nature. You must have seen the chalk powder. So, as the chalk powder is fluffy, so the same thing, the soft wheat flour is quite fluffy. And in case of soft wheat, uh, this uh, starch protein complex which is present in the endosperm. So it is also not so strong. So that will lead to lesser damaged starch as compared to hard wheat varieties and it will lead to lower water absorption capacity because the damaged starch content is less in case of soft wheat. So this soft wheat uh, uh, dough, it is quite extensible. It is not elastic. It is not so elastic, but it is extensible. So this kind of soft wheat flour, it is used for uh, cookie or biscuit or cake making. Yes, any problem, please? So then comes the durum wheat. So this durum wheat, it is the hardest wheat which is grown. Ma'am. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Ma'am, the hard wheat is good for manufacturing what, ma'am? Uh, bread. Dairy, bread. Dairy. Bread. Okay. Bread. Thank yes. You. Yeah. So uh, next one is the durum wheat. So this durum wheat. Uh, it is uh, suitable for uh, the production of pasta, macaroni products, vermicellis, semolina. So for that thing, it is suitable. And moreover, this uh, durum wheat, it contains a yellow colored pigment that is known as xanthophyll, which is deficient in hard and soft wheat, which, and it is present in durum wheat. So uh, uh, this uh, gives it a a uh, proper characteristic for the formation of pasta and macaroni products. Second thing, it is high in protein. So vis a vis, it will contain higher gluten content also. So that is again, uh, it is necessary or it is mandatory for good pasta making quality. And uh, sometimes it may be used uh, for the production of baked go goods also. That is the risen breads. But uh, if it, uh, that hard wheat is present, then it would be preferred as compared for. Haan, boli, boli, boli. Ma'am, uh, say ye hard wheat apne bataya. Haan, so haan. Ye hard wheat or durum wheat me kya difference? Me, Wahi me, me, if you're saying ki wo hard wheat be hard high gluten hai. Uh -huh. so then durum wheat also have high gluten, I think. Now, one thing you just a moment. Because, Main, aap, I'm just coming to it. Just a moment. Huh? Be okay, patient. Yeah. Oh, okay. So this durum wheat, I told you it contains xanthophyll. 
then second thing it has higher mineral content as compared to the hard wheat third thing it contains a specific uh, protein fraction that is gamma 45 gliadin unit which is responsible for good pasta making quality so that is absent in hard wheat and it is present in durum wheat so next thing because it is hard because it is the hardest wheat so it gives it the proper characteristic which is good for pasta making it gives it good strength properties it gives it good elastic properties you must have had pasta and it is a bit chewy and elastic in nature so that is imparted because of the protein content as well as the gamma 45 fraction of gliadin which is present in it so for that purpose it is different from hard wheat now is it clear or not yes ma'am yes ma'am it's clear okay what's your good name who has asked this question kirti kirti you uh, you are from ma'am i have done msc in food tech ma'am and i have uh, industrial experience of 4.5 years okay so from which institute you have done ma'am ilahabad university Okay. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. So, uh, next classification, as I told you, uh, triticum mestivum. Triticum mestivum range it may be from eleven to sixteen percent. It depends upon variety to variety. But in books, it is usually written fourteen to sixteen percent. But uh, actually, I have done PhD in wheat proteins only. So that ways uh, the uh, range is usually uh, like twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So that is the range. So it is good for bread making. Then is triticum durum, like fourteen, fifteen percent is there. It is good for pasta products. Then triticum compactum is there. and it is good for biscuits cakes and pastries and cookies so it is 7 to 12% so it varies so as i told you durum wheat it is preferred for pasta products and how it is different from triticum mestivum that is the hard wheat so first thing is durum wheat it has double concentration of xanthophyll that is the yellow pigment so it gives its bright and yellow color then the second thing because it is a very hard wheat variety so it resists disintegration when cooked and it gives firm texture and good mechanical strength to the pasta products then the third major thing is it contains gliadin 45 sub unit which confers good cooking quality in the pasta product mm -hmm. and the last one is the mineral composition of durum wheat is one and a half times greater than the bread wheat as i told you that is the hard wheat particularly for calcium phosphorus and magnesium and these minerals they play a significant role in improving the cooking quality of pasta products i think you must have got your answer now kirti um i got it i understood thank you thank you so uh, next one is uh, the wheat grain size and its morphology so uh, wheat grain or wheat kernel so sometimes i may say grain or i may say kernel so don't get confused so the wheat grain or wheat kernel it is a one seeded fruit and it is also known as caryopsis so uh, its length is about 5 to 8 mm and its uh, width is 2.5 to 4.5 and uh, as we uh, see this grain when we take it in hand so we may see that uh, it has a very characteristic feature in it it has a crease uh, as you may see here this is a grain and this is the crease so this crease it goes up to the center of the grain and this makes it most difficult to handle during the milling practices so this is a hindrance this crease is present in this grain and moreover this grain it is quite thicker towards the uh, end so where the embryo is present so here embryo is present it is quite thick and the on the opposite side of the grain there is present a beard like structure there are present some hair so they are known as brush 
here brush is present at the opposite end where the uh, embryo is present so when we talk about the structure of the wheat grain so first thing uh, comes the grain coat so this grain coat it is made up of two things one is the fruit and another one is the seed coat and beneath the seed coat there is eluron layer and eluron layer it is uh, it is preceded by sub eluron layer and thereafter the endosperm is present so these eluron layers these are quite rich in protein whereas the outer layers that is the fruit coat that is the pericarp or the seed coat and one more layer is there that is the nucellus they are rich in complex carbohydrates or in digestible fiber that is cellulose hemicellulose with it it also contain minerals so actual function of these uh, outer bran layers which include the pericarp seed coat and the nucellus that is uh they help in protecting the grain and uh they are uh, they uh, quite remain uh, as it is or intact when the seed germinates so uh this seed coat it uh, uh, the inner layers of the seed coat they contain uh, the uh, pigments also the coloring pigments which give the grain a particular color because red wheat is also there then uh, black wheat is there uh, so they contain the pigments so that is present in the inner layers of the bran so this is the structure of a wheat grain so first thing is the bran so we will start from the first layer first one is epidermis then comes the hypodermis then are the cross cells then tube cells so epidermis hypodermis cross cells and tube cells in combination they are known by the name pericarp they are known by the name pericarp then comes the seed coat so uh, we are moving from outside to inside towards the center so first layer is epidermis then hypodermis then cross cells then tube cells so this is the pericarp thereafter comes the seed coat that is known as testa then is the nucellar tissue and in after nucellar tissue there comes these eluron layers and eluron layers after the eluron layer there comes the endosperm so endosperm is there is a protein matrix in which the starch granules are present so this is endosperm and on the lower side of the grain you may see there is germ so germ it is uh, composed of uh, three things uh, mainly three things one is cotyledon uh, you may say uh, scutellum and then is the plumule and then is the radical radical as root it also starts from r and radical also starts from r so radical it leads to the formation of root and plumule it leads to the formation of the shoot so this germ is there it is the reproductive part of the grain and you may see uh, where the germ is present on the opposite end of the germ there is uh, there are present some hair like structures which is known as hair brush so that is present so this is the uh, structure of the wheat grain so now i think it will be clear from this Ma diagram yes yes it's yes i'm getting this the endosperm and eluron cell layer that that part can you please repeat now yes i will repeat and uh, it will come in further slides also and i will repeat it again for you so now what happens uh, you may see that uh, if we move from outside to inside uh, new cellular tissue is present and after new cellular tissue towards the inner side then the next layer which is present is the eluron layer you may see this kind of layer uh, my cursor is there on it so this is the eluron yes. layer ha huh? and after the eluron layer then the endosperm is present eluron eluron layer is also there are two membranes eluron and sub eluron 
and thereafter this uh, major portion from which the wheat flour is produced or the maida is produced this endosperm is there so is it clear yes ma'am first epidermis then hypodermis then cross cells tube cells then is the seed coat testa then new cellular tissue then is the eluron layer then is the sub eluron layer and thereafter it is the endosperm so this is there uh, ma'am uh, excuse me i wanted to ask something mm -hmm. uh, ma'am uh, when milling is done this eluron layer is uh, included in the floor or it is excluded with bran it is, it is excluded uh, some part of it is there in the uh, wheat flour but uh, majority of it is with bran only okay so it is removed yes it is removed okay okay only endosperm is milled and uh, we get that refined flour uh, that is known by the name maida so that is there and normal flour uh, this wheat flour which is made from chapatis in that okay uh, there are there are two types of flour uh, on a broad basis i am telling you one yeah. is whole whole wheat flour yes whole wheat flour it contains bran it contains endosperm it contains germ also so that okay. is why it is more prone to get rancid because in it the germ is present which is rich in fat okay ha uh, and the second thing is the refined flour which we call by uh -huh. the name maida yes yes so in maida there is only endosperm portion and uh -huh. the good portion of wheat grain that is the bran which contains insoluble fibers also and the minerals also and yes, the yes. germ they uh -huh. are excluded so that is refined flour okay okay thank you ma'am yeah so now this is the structure as i told you first one is the pericarp so pericarp is the fruit coat it is known by the name fruit coat it contains epidermis then is the hypodermis after the epidermis and hypodermis then there are cross cells or the tube cells after the tube cells or the cross cells there is seed coat that is known by the name testa and after the testa there is new cellular epidermis so new cellular epidermis it is made up of hyaline layer and the perisperm thereafter comes the endosperm endosperm is eluron layer and the starchy endosperm so up till here that is up till eluron layer it comes under bran and that has to be removed during the milling process if we are going to procure that refined flour and thereafter comes the germ germ it contains two things scutellum and then i as i told you plumule is there and radical scutellum are the cotyledons which provide food to the sapling so they contain the stored food uh, in the form of complex uh, carbohydrates and when uh, they these grains they are wetted so these enzymes they get deactivate uh, they get activated and the complex carbohydrates are converted into simpler ones so that the sapling can get food and grow so this is uh, the structure of the wheat grain any problem in structure of wheat grain no madam okay. we understand okay so if if you feel ke something is not uh, Uh, like uh, clear to you you may interrupt in between and you may ask at that very point only okay so uh, this eluron layer this eluron layer it is made up of large thick walled cells which are filled with proteins and nutritional components and it encloses the endosperm and it disappears around the embryo so you may see here here so as we move down up uh, agar aap is figure ko acche se dekh pa rahe hain so aap mera yahan ek cursor par dekhiye aap ki you may see one brown colored line is there and uh, brown color jo brown, brown colored line hai uske andar there is again one more layer of the cells so this so as you may see as i am proceeding downwards you may see this layer is getting disappeared here only the brown colored line is there and the uh, white or off white colored uh, that layer it disappears when it comes in contact with the embryo 
so this is what is explained here that aluron layer uh, it disappears around the embryo endosperm it consists of large or thin wall cells filled mainly with starch and protein and the sub aluron layer it is uh, that is the back side of the grain these uh, cells they are elongated in nature and uh, the cells with uh, which are present in the endosperm they are not regular they are irregularly uh, shaped and these starch grains these are enclosed in a thin layer of adherent protein as i told you that there is a protein matrix in which these starch granules are embedded so the highest content of the protein is observed in the cells of the sub aluron layer of the endosperm so this is the structure again as i told you uh, outer pericarp here you will see okay, what kind of substances are present or what uh, they are composed of which things so like outer pericarp is there it is composed of insoluble dietary fibers and antioxidants then comes the aluron layer as i was talking about it consists of insoluble dietary fibers proteins also enzymes phenolic compounds lignans are there vitamin e vitamin b complex minerals phytic acid lipids plant sterols they are all present and in case of starchy endosperm there is only protein and starch and a very negligible amount of fiber is present and in the germ there are plant sterols antioxidants vitamin e vitamin b complex minerals and enzymes are there so this is the average composition of the wheat uh, protein content on an average 12% fat is around 2 carbohydrates 72% vitamin b and e is 1% minerals calcium and iron and water is around 12% that means moisture content is 12% so this whole wheat if we consume it is a very good source of thiamine that is vitamin b1 vitamin b2 and vitamin b3 and wheat germ oil it is a very good source of vitamin e and uh, essential fatty acids bran it contains complex carbohydrates that is cellulose and hemicellulose and germ it contains almost all soluble sugars so this wheat grain Uh, although we are going to discuss this protein part in detail in the coming lectures but uh, somehow i felt k it should be here also so here you may see that wheat grain moisture lipids mineral starch and proteins so this protein this protein uh, the proteins are of two types one is gluten forming protein and another one are non gluten forming protein so uh, the non gluten forming proteins they are albumin and globulin so these albumin and globulin they uh, contribute to the protein percentage only 10 to 20% and the gluten forming protein they constitute around 80% and this gluten forming protein this is further divided into two uh, subdivisions that is gliadin and glutenin gliadin it provides viscosity and glutenin it provides elasticity and this glutenin is further of two types high molecular weight glutenin protein subunits and low molecular weight and whereas gliadin it is divided into three sub sub categories that is alpha gliadin alpha gliadin is composed of beta gliadin also that was included in it only then gamma gliadins are there and omega gliadins are there so this is the classification of the wheat proteins like here you yes, yes. ma'am once again please uh, please uh, show that yes. screen once ha uh, here again it is there so i will explain it here also and i will show that also Ma first thing i talked about ha uh, ha bolo bolo the bolo. question was uh, that wheat protein uh, uh, we have a gluten and uh, means gluten contains uh, sub parts like glutenin and gliadin 
so uh, what mm-hmm. albumin and globulin is present in the egg protein na na that is a l b u m i n and m e n is there kya in It's egg albumin so i am confused with the this term particular term albumin is present in egg protein i think so that's why i was present in egg there is a difference of i and e I that is what that is what i am saying present in wheat and e is present in egg egg, so egg. things are different okay. i yes. okay now it's clear. that is what i, I was saying ke it is m i n and there it is m e n okay okay yes yes so here it is albumin it is water soluble and globulin it is salt soluble okay so albumin and globulin they are non gluten forming protein suppose there is 10 g of protein present so if 10 g of protein is present then from that 10 g 8 g will be gluten forming protein and 2 g will be non gluten forming protein that is composed of albumin and globulin okay and the gluten forming protein they are further composed of two sub fractions that is gliadins and glutenins so these gliadins they are soluble in 70% alcohol so they are classified on the basis of their solubilities and these glutenins they are soluble in dilute acids so these glutenins they are further divided into two categories again one is high molecular weight glutenin and another one is low molecular weight glutenin and these gliadins they are of two three types alpha alpha complex bol dete hain isko it is composed of alpha and beta both then is the gamma gliadins and another one is the omega gliadin so uh, should i show you the previous slide also or is it clear from this slide no ma'am it's clear now okay so it was all about uh, wheat and now uh, we will cover the rice grain structure so uh, rice grain structure it is composed of hull then is the bran then is the endosperm and then is the germ now uh, you people are very smart but uh, when in initial days when we were studying uh, mujhe to hull aur husk ya bran dono ek jaise nazar aate the मुझे तो ये लगता था कि हल बोला तो भी वो ब्रैन है और ब्रैन बोला तो वो हल नजर आता था बट दीज आर टू डिफरेंट थिंग्स सपोज लाइक यू मे एज्यूम लाइक इन विंटर सीजन वी मे वेयर टू स्वेटर्स आल्सो ओके सो द फर्स्ट लेयर इट इज नोन एज हल इट इज द फर्स्ट फॉरमोस्ट लेयर दैट इज नोन एज हल देन द सेकेंड प्रोटेक्टिव लेयर इट इज द ब्रैन and after the bran it will uh, there will be endosperm and then there will be the germ so this hull or husk it is tough its main function is protection second thing is bran again its function is protection but it, it is a very good source of fiber as well as minerals also hull is also a very good source of silica then comes the endosperm endosperm it mainly consists of starch and some amount of proteins then comes the germ that is known by the name embryo also it contains certain oils vitamins and minerals also so uh, that is the basic structure of the rice now we will discuss in detail so uh, leaving apart this we will come to this slide first thing it is a major cereal food crop second india is second in the production of rice next to china its scientific name is oryza sativa and this oryza sativa it is subdivided into two again categories one is the long grain that is known as oryza sativa indica and the short grain variety it is known by the name japonica so one is indica long grain and another one is japonica that is the short grain rice variety so in case of rice almost 20% of its composition it is contributed by the hull and then 
Eighty percent is the brown rice. Now uh, you will feel sometimes I am saying rice, sometimes I am saying brown rice, sometimes I I will say white rice. So what is this? So this brown rice means it is not polished. So that means embryo is still present. Okay, but if I say white rice, so that means neither bran is there. nor aluron layer is there nor germ is there so if we remove all these layers then it will lead to the production of the white rice which we usually consume in our diet so this is the basic difference between these two brown rice is that rice from which the bran layers are not removed and the germ is also present but the white rice is the one from which bran is also removed embryo is removed as embryo or the germ is also removed so that is white rice so uh when we talk about the endosperm of the rice endosperm as uh, you have studied in the wheat grain also endosperm uh, it is surrounded by a layer that is known as aluron layer and the aluron layer it consists of sub aluron layer and then the endosperm is present then uh, this pigment which gives color to the uh, this rice grain it is confined to the pericarp now what is pericarp it is epidermis it is hypodermis it is tube cells and the uh, compact cells so all these uh, they uh, constitute this pericarp so next aluron layer it is 1 to 5 cell thick it is thicker at the dorsal that is the back end than at the ventral end and moreover this aluron uh, layer is thick in case of short grain as compared to the long grain rice so the these aluron layers or the sub aluron layers these are rich in protein and lipid same as in case of wheat grain and moreover they have smaller amyloplast amyloplast are the cells which contain starch granules so these are amyloplast these starch granules they are polyhedral and their size is 3 to 9 micrometers protein they occur in the form of spherical protein bodies and their size is 0.5 to 4 micrometers now these uh, uh the carbohydrates they are mainly present in the endosperm then comes the protein as i told you they are present in the form of spherical granules and uh, uh, this brown rice it contains around 8% protein and 75% carbohydrate but after milling that is after the removal of the bran and the germ the protein content of the rice is about 7% and the carbohydrate content it increases so it is 78% so starch is the main carbohydrate of rice and it comprises up to 90% of the rice solids and generally amylose content is 12 to 35% and amylopectin is uh, the remaining one but in case of waxy rice amylopectin may be 100% also so this amylose and amylopectin amylose is linearly changed amylopectin is branched and uh, amylopectin it contributes to the uh, waxy characteristic to the starch so aapne dekha hoga kai jo rice jab hum banate hain kuch to khulle khulle se bante hain alag alag dane se dikhte hain hame aur kuch aise rice hote hain jo bilkul chipke chipke se bante hain ekdam ek ikatthe ho jate hain wo sare to jo is tarike se ikatthe ho jate hain they are glutinous rice so that shows they have more concentration of amylopectin as compared to amylose then is the rice hull or the husk so hull as i told you this is the first layer so it is inedible and this hull it is composed of two things that is lemma and pelia so lemma and pelia is like this as you may see lemma l l means longer pelia it is shorter as you may see in this figure this is lemma and this one is pelia 
on uh, like if i see my screen on my left hand side l l is lemma l is left l is lemma and on my right hand side it is pallia so uh, these lemma and pallia they constitute the hull or the husk and the this pointed portion it is known as on a w n it is on so uh, the their basic function is the protection they help in the insulation of the caryopsis caryopsis is single seeded fruit single seeded fruit so that means grain so this caryopsis it uh, insulates this caryopsis from temperature and moisture changes and uh, uh they uh, this uh, hull or husk it is a good contributor to the silica silica it is used for making glass so it contains major portion of silica also and here one term is used opaline opaline means off white colored like uh, milk uh, milk uh, glass glass of milk so that glass of milk that kind of color it is known as opaline so this hull or husk this has to be removed during the milling process because uh, we humans we cannot digest this hull or the husk then comes the rice bran so after the hull there is one layer that is known as rice bran so this rice bran it is usually removed during the milling process and uh, you must have heard one name rice bran oil have you heard this name yes ma'am so this is uh, this is procured from this rice rice bran which is a by product of rice milling process so this rice bran it is very rich in antioxidants and it is considered to be very good for uh, human beings and their uh, general health and it is a good source of vitamin b also and uh, it is used as an animal feed also as you may see in this figure this is known as paddy paddy means hull is there okay that is paddy after that hull is removed so we uh, get this brown rice so that uh, hull or husk it is used as a source of silica or it can be given to the animals also we get this brown rice so that means bran is there and germ is there after that uh, we uh, go for the milling in the milling process then again we get this rice bran it it is a by product and we get the ri white rice so that means this white rice <coughs> it is devoid of sorry it is devoid of uh, bran as well as the germ or the embryo and we get this ha uh -huh. a question regarding this only hmm. see uh, actually uh, so far more we have heard that people do use brown rice if they are health conscious mm -hmm. so according to my perception i knew that brown rice wouldn't have starch or carbs so that why is it is used for diet means healthy diet so uh, if uh, the brown rice is directly formed from a paddy rice the, mm -hmm. uh, the purpose of this question is starch is not removed from the uh, brown rice so how it is healthy for a uh, means health conscious, conscious person i'm uh, now one thing uh, i may be wrong also but uh, what i have learned or i have studied from my teachers one thing yeah. is there that this brown rice as you are saying it does not contain starch it contains starch First yeah thing. means i okay. have percept that ha ha yeah. and the second thing is ke because the bran has not been removed and bran is good source of fiber fiber yeah okay so yeah. as we consume this brown rice however it is quite indigestible in our body because it is a good source of fiber so what is the uh, why we consume it why we go for it in weight loss diets the purpose is because it is a good source of fiber and as we consume this this fiber will absorb water so if it will absorb water it will add bulk to our diet our stomach will feel like it is full if we have small amount of portion our stomach will indicate that i am full i don't need any kind of food more so in turn we will be eating less because the fiber is there it has absorbed water and it is providing bulk in the stomach so stomach is full 
so that okay. ways we will be consuming lesser calories as compared to the white rice second thing okay. in white rice starch is present more more percentage of starch is present and starch and it you may consider as uh, it as a quick source of energy our body uh, need not do sternus work to digest this white rice so that ways we will be spending lesser amount of energy to digest white rice as compared to brown rice so if we consume brown rice we will uh, spend more energy so that ways uh, that calorie deficit will be there and uh, we will be losing weight okay fine yeah yeah so uh, next thing is the aluron layer Excuse as i told yes 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 ma'am can you please tell uh, important questions regarding these बेटा इसके अंदर जो भी मैंने आपको ये हाईलाइट कर रखे हैं विद डिफरेंट कलर्स दीज आर क्वाइट इंपॉर्टेंट एंड मोर ओवर आई विल गिव यू द ऑब्जेक्टिव क्वेश्चन ऑल्सो ऑल्सो रिगार्डिंग दिस ओके सो यू मे प्रिपेयर इट अकॉर्डिंगली एंड यू मस्ट बी हैविंग दैट संजीव कुमार बुक विद यू ना ए एस आर बी के लिए yes. हाँ हाँ तो बस उसको तो आप बिल्कुल एकदम कर ही लेना उसको तो बहुत अच्छे से ठीक है and okay. uh, whatever the extra questions will be there surely i will provide it to you so next come the aluron layer uh, aluron layer uh, as uh, it was present in the wheat grain uh, the uh, the layer which is present on the outer side of the endosperm just after the endosperm that is known as aluron layer and uh, it is very tightly bound and uh, these uh, aluron layers there are present some uh, special kind of cells or the storage structures one are the aluron grains and another one is the lipid bodies so these aluron grains are also known as protein bodies pbs or alurins and the lipid bodies they are also known by the names ferrosomes so these two types of storage structures are present in these aluron layers and uh, this uh, starchy endosperm it is again divided into two regions one is the subaluron layer and then is the central region which is mainly composed of 90% of it is mainly composed of starch so that is there then uh, glutenin it is not glutenin n i n it is present in wheat if i say l i n glutenin that means it is present in rice this is confusing if i say glutenin then it is present in wheat and if i say glutenin l i n then it is present in rice so these rice proteins as uh, we know the cereals they are deficient in lysine threonine and tryptophan so these rice proteins they are deficient in this lysine and threonine and they contain good amounts of arginine the major carbohydrate which is present it is starch polished rice if i say it is poor in calcium and iron and there are uh, some pigments present in colored rice that is anthocyanins and carotenoids and one important thing that basmati rice and it has a peculiar flavor so that flavor is because of one compound that is 2 acetyl 1 pyrrolene and when i uh, went for this asrb net exam this question was there 2 acetyl 1 pyrrolene that compound which is responsible for flavor in basmati rice so that was rice now comes yes can you tell me about black rice what is the pigment which is responsible for black color of the rice beta it should be anthocyanin it should be i am not so sure but it should be uh, anthocyanin because that is like purple colored or uh, uh, kind of that black colored is also same as comparative nutrition value uh, similar to the brown rice or it is different it is matlab what what you want to ask 
the nutrition point of view the black rice and the brown rice is same or it is different from the nutrition actually to uh, this uh, black rice it has very good antioxidant properties so that is why it is considered a kind of uh, unique rice and uh, in the earlier times na uh, like uh, ye like king uh, matlab jo ameer log hote the aur is tarah ke log hote they used to consume this uh, black rice so black rice and brown rice is different uh they are not same so uh, i am sure that 98% it should be anthocyanin 2% chances are there ki i may be wrong okay so you may check it accordingly but matlab i am pretty sure it is anthocyanin pigment which is present in black rice okay okay yeah then comes the maize uh ab jo ye maize hai na iska bhi bada hi uh, amazing structure hai इसके अंदर जो एंडोस्पर्म होती है ना वो दो दो पार्ट्स में डिवाइडेड होती है अब मैं आपको जब इसका स्ट्रक्चर दिखाऊंगी तो देन यू मे सी इट हैज टू डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ एंडोस्पर्म हार्ड एंडोस्पर्म इज देयर एंड दैट व्हिच कंटेन्स लूज सेल्स दैट काइंड ऑफ एंडोस्पर्म इज देयर सो वी विल डिस्कस दैट मेज इट साइंटिफिक नेम इज जी मेज सो इन इंग्लिश स्पीकिंग कंट्रीज इट इज नोन बाय द नेम कॉर्न आल्सो एंड basically the seeds they are known by the name kernels and uh, these uh, uh, kernels they are uh, used for uh, preparing corn starch also they may be consumed as such like bhutta which we consume that is the maize so this uh, maize it has been classified into various subspecies like flower corn is there popcorn dent corn flint corn sweet corn waxy corn amilo maize pod corn so there are different types of uh, corns so our main concern is about the structure of the uh, grain or the kernel and uh, then what is present inside it its nutritional composition so this maize grain it uh, is composed of 82 to 83% endosperm germ is 10 to 11% pericarp it is 5 to 6% that is the fruit coat and then there is one another structure which is present that is known by the name tip cap so it is it contributes to 0.8 to 1% so uh, pericarp it is the outermost layer it will be composed of some complex carbohydrates and uh, some amount of lipids are also present in pericarp as well as the tip cap and this endosperm endosperm it is composed of large size cells and in this these starch granules these are embedded in a protein matrix so as you may see this is the type of endosperm so uh, two types of endosperm are there as you may see uh, at the periphery so this is known as horny horny endosperm horny endosperm means hard endosperm horny horns uh, you must have seen on the animal head so they are quite hard so i remember uh, by correlating it with that so this horny endosperm it is quite hard and the middle portion it is the flary endosperm it is soft so this endosperm it is of two types flary and horny and then uh, as uh, you may see bran is there so bran epidermis mesocarp cross cells tube cells and then the seed coat germ plumule scutellum and the radicle now here you see this maize grain it has two types of endosperm flary and horny horny they are present at the periphery and flary it is present in the center flary endosperm it consists of loosely packed starch granules surrounding the central fissure horny endosperm has tightly packed smaller starch granules towards the periphery it is very important then the grains which have higher proportion of harder endosperm that means horny endosperm they are usually preferred for dry milling 
so uh the storage proteins of endosperm they are present in subcellular bodies they are known as protein bodies these protein bodies they are composed of uh, the sorry the protein of the maize it is known by the name zine देखिए डिफरेंट क्रॉप्स आएंगे उनके प्रोटीन्स को हम डिफरेंट तरीके से बोलेंगे जैसे व्हीट का था ग्लूटेनिन राइस का था ग्लूटेलिन एंड इन केस ऑफ मेज एज इट साइंटिफिक नेम इज जी मेज सो द प्रोटीन इट इज नोन बाय द नेम जीन एंड अगेन द सेम थिंग इट इज डेफिशिएंट इन लाइसिन देन द फैट कॉन्टेंट ऑफ द एंडोस्पर्म इज क्वाइट लो the lipids which are uh, present in endosperm they are saturated fatty acids and the germ portion of the maize it consists very high amount of fat that is 33% and the protein content is also high that is 18% but this germ it is contains low amount of starch that is 8% but its oil is high in pufa that is polyunsaturated fatty acids so this germ because it is a very good source of fat it contains 33% fat so uh, the oil which is derived from it it is quite stable because of the presence of natural antioxidants and it is good for health because of its higher concentration of pufa uh, the carotenoids which are present in maize uh, the main one are lutein and zeaxanthin z zea it comes from z maize xanthin and lutein these are the main carotenoids of maize then uh, the uh, is it okay are you people getting me what i want to explain yes ma'am yes ma'am okay so uh, now we will talk about barley barley it is the fourth important cereal of the world we have studied wheat we have studied rice we have studied maize now comes the barley barley uh, is nowadays it is generally used in the malt industry because it is aap ye keh sakte hain ye khan hai enzymes ki so isse malt banaya jata hai aur isko malt industry beer industry aur in sab ke andar isko use kiya jata hai it is used in bread industry also सो so, इनिशियली क्या होता था कि ये जो वीट वगैरह थे इनका कुछ ज्यादा लोगों को पता नहीं था तो लोग बार्ले भी कंज्यूम करते थे आफ्टर मिलिंग ऑफ इट ये जो है इट इज अ विंटर क्रॉप रबी क्रॉप आप बोल सकते हैं एंड इट इज यूजली ग्रोन इन राजस्थान बिकॉज देयर वॉटर स्कैरसिटी इज देयर सो देयर इट इज ग्रोन बट इट इज ग्रोन इन सर्टन पार्ट ऑफ पंजाब हरियाणा बिहार मध्य प्रदेश एंड उत्तर प्रदेश ऑल्सो सो दिस इज द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ बार्ले द साइंटिफिक नेम ऑफ बार्ले इज होर्डियम वलगेयर होर्डियम वलगेयर एंड दैट इज वाई इट्स प्रोटीन विल बी नोन बाय द नेम होर्डीन एच ओ आर डी ई आई एन दैट इज होर्डीन so this barley it is used as animal fodder also it is used as a source of fermentable material for beer and other distilled beverages and it is also uh, considered as healthy food also because it is rich in fiber it is rich in protein and it is rich in enzymes also so this barley it has a nutty flavor and uh, uh, when the milling of barley has been done it is uh, its structure or its uh, looks are quite similar to the wheat grain but the difference is only in the color uh, that wheat grain it has a golden color and the barley it has uh, a little bit uh, uh, brownish tinge not that golden color so that is the difference between and uh, this barley grain it has a nutty flavor so this is the difference so uh, this uh, grain it was used for human consumption but now as i told you it is used in uh, malt industries so these industrial standards they say that uh, the grain size it should be greater than 2.5 mm 
because uh, if the size is small that means they will have lower starch content and they will have high uh, protein levels so thereby they reduce the feed potential so they, they don't uh, prefer the smaller grains they prefer the larger grains because uh, it will be having more of starch content which is uh, required in the industry so that is there so uh, in case of milling we remove the hull and the bran layers and uh, then it is consumed and uh, malting uh, barley cultivars they may be classified as soft and whereas non malting or feed cultivars they are classified as hard so this hardness it is usually associated with the level uh, of modification of the malt or like uh, what kind of bonding pattern is present in the endosperm so one term is used that is the milling energy and it indicates that uh, uh, how hard the grain of barley is so that is indicated by the milling energy because more the hardness more energy inputs will be required for the milling of the barley grains so this is the structure of uh, barley grain uh barley husk it is around 13% of the grain weight and uh, husk Can it's main yes 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 barley grain remains more firmer than any other cereal grain that is why is it, this is used for use in malting is it so no it is used in malting because it is a rich source of enzymes that is why it is used and moreover it's protein uh, because of its protein nature of protein and it so hull also acts as filtration aid i guess yes yes it can be used as a filtering aid also okay ma'am okay yes thank you ha huh. i have mentioned in the slide also that the husk aids during filtration of the brewers extract from the lottering process so that is there so uh, this huskless barley Uh, it uh, if we use this in malting industry so it may uh, cause the clogging of the filters and thereby reduce the filtration rate so that is why uh, the barley with husk is preferred uh, by the brewer industry then comes the barley endosperm so starch is the most abundant component and it constitutes around 60% starch it is made up of two things amylose and amylopectin this is again another important point that amylose it is a linear polymer and in this the linkage is alpha 14 glucosidic linkage this you should remember in case of amylopectin there are two types of linkages that is alpha 14 glucosidic and alpha 16 glucosidic linkage so that is very important okay so this you should remember it is alpha 16 it is not beta 16 so in mcqs uh, uh, they add this beta 16 also so this is a very important point from examination view of point then the ratio of amylopectin to amylose is 3 is to 1 that is around 75% amylopectin and 25% is amylose then the major constituent of barley endosperm cell wall is uh, 13 d 1 3 or 1 4 glucan with a minor component is arabinoxylan so major is glucan and minor is arabinoxylan so this arabinoxylan is also known by the name pentosan this pentosan is also present in wheat grains and uh, it has been found that this pentosan it can absorb uh, water five times its weight so this arabinoxylan it is known by the name pentosan also this is again important and uh, the beta glucan uh, which is present in barley it is around 2 to 10% of the total grain weight so uh, protein content if we talk about uh, protein content is around uh, yes yes excuse me hmm. barley contains more beta gluten than oats no you mentioned in the previous slide that it contains 2 to 10% it depends upon variety to variety 
that is why this range is given so it may okay. be 2% also means... <laughs> हाँ That's uh, why we can say that. Uh, मुझे ये लगता है कि almost uh, almost same सा ही रहता है. Uh, I may be uh, like two to ten percent is barley and two uh, to eight eight or seven percent is oats. Because we say that oats they are good source of beta gluten. बीटा ग्लूकैन इज देयर मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि इट इज ऑलमोस्ट सेम एक या दो परसेंट का डिफरेंस हो सकता है बारले भी बीटा ग्लूकैन का गुड सोर्स है हाँ जी बारले भी हाँ हाँ बिल्कुल बिल्कुल क्योंकि ओट्स में ना इससे एक दो परसेंट कम भले ही मिल सकता है ज्यादा नहीं मिलेगा दस से इट विल बी लेस देन टेन हाँ इट इज देयर सो the protein uh, of barley it is hordein as i told you it is hordein and uh, uh, 50% of the protein content is hordein and uh, other three protein fractions are albumins globulins and glutalins so because these proteins are rich in amino acids proline and glutamine that is why they are known by the name prolamine dekho pro is taken from proline and amine is uh, taken from prol from proline and amine it is taken from glutamine and inko combine karke one another term was coined that is known as prolamine so this prolamine it is soluble in aqueous alcohol and it comprises of four fractions d c b and a and now comes the oats so this oat uh, it is again composed of bran germ and endosperm uh, i think uh, before that i should show you this slide so this is a oat plant and uh, you may see then oat florets are there this is oat grain uh, with hull when hull is removed we get this oat grain oat grain growths kind of so inko fir hum cut kar dete hain so these are known as steel cut oat grains then oat flakes can be prepared oat flour can be prepared and there will be oat bran also and uh, as you told and i am also telling that it is a good source of beta glucan so here uh, this oat growth it consists of embryo endosperm and outer layers that is contained within two floral bracts that is the lemma and the pallia lemma is the lo longer one and pallia is shorter one so these components are fibrous and uh, they are uh, they attribute a protective uh, action on the grains so they are known by the name hulls also and uh, when it is to be used for human consumption then this hull has to be removed and it contributes to 30% of the total kernel weight so that is there so next uh, the bran uh, uh, it is the outermost layer and uh, that uh, within the bran layer there is oat growth and thereafter endosperm is there endosperm it contributes to it constitutes 55 to 70% of the weight and uh, this endosperm it is rich in starch and uh, consists of protein bodies which uh, um and this uh, what you say this endosperm it is also uh, it acts uh, like a, a storehouse of reserve food for the growing embryo during the germination also so this is the structure of the oat grain as you may see first one uh, the bran is there bran pericarp 
then seed coat then the aleurone layer then is the sub aleurone layer and thereafter there will be endosperm if i talk about germ then endosperm then depleted layer then is the scutellum and this is the endosperm so here you can see it has thin walls beta glucan is there pentosan or arabidoxylan is there and some phenolics are also present and these cracked structures these are the starch granules these are compound starch granules and these round bodies these are single starch granules and you may see these blue colored bodies these are the proteins these red colored bodies these are the fat and one or two these uh, uh, green colored spots may be seen and they are known as phytin phytin it acts as a uh, like a storehouse of phosphorus so they are also present here you may see these uh, green colored uh, round balls these are basically phytin so this is the structure of the oat you excuse yes. me ma'am yes or yes. uh, do we need to remember these diagrams also बेटा अगर आपको डायग्राम का पता है तो यू विल नॉट गेट कंफ्यूज्ड मतलब फर्स्ट थिंग आई मतलब एनश्योर दैट इज व्हाई आई हैव शोन दिस इलेबोरेट डायग्राम सो दैट यू पीपल कैन रिमेंबर वेयर द एल्यूरोन लेयर इज प्रेजेंट आउटर मोस्ट लेयर कौन सी होती है एंडोस्पर्म की इट इज द सब एल्यूरोन लेयर है ना फिर सब एल्यूरोन लेयर के बाद देन यू विल गेट दैट एल्यूरोन लेयर फिर उससे ऊपर आपको ये ट्यूब सेल्स वगैरह मिलेंगे अच्छा मैं Uh, ये भी आपको पता होना चाहिए कि पेरिकाप क्या होता है दैट इज द फ्रूट कोट एंड देन दैट सीड कोट क्या है क्योंकि हमें कंफ्यूजन इनमें भी हो जाती है कि ये सीड कोट बोल रहे हैं फ्रूट कोट बोल रहे हैं तो कौन सी चीज फ्रूट कोट है और कौन सी चीज सीड कोट है तो यहां भी प्रॉब्लम हो जाती है ठीक है सो एक बार अगर आपको पता चल जाएगा देन यू आर एक्सपर्ट एंड यू कैन वेरी वेल रिमेंबर इट जस्ट फॉर दैट पर्पज इट वॉज देयर हेलो बेटा क्लास इज फॉर टू आवर्स ओके मैम थोड़ा सा शुरू कर लेते हैं अगर आपको थोड़ा बोरिंग लगे मेरे ख्याल में आप थोड़ा सा डिफरेंट हो जाएगा ना तो यू विल एंजॉय दिस ओके यस मैम ओके सो स्क्रीन इज विजिबल यस मैम ओके सो नाउ इज द वीट मिलिंग सो दिस इज अगेन अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक वीट मिलिंग सो फर्स्ट थिंग वीट we know genus is triticum family is gramini it is a grass family and it is one of the most important cereal crops in the world and uh, three main types of wheat varieties are there triticum estivum triticum durum and triticum compactum so triticum estivum it is hard wheat triticum durum it is very hard and then is triticum compactum it is soft white wheat so this was uh, this is the structure we have already discussed is now what is milling um, ma'am is poisin gramini family is the same yes okay hmm. so uh, first thing is what is milling dekhiye aapke paas kuch bhi hota hai matlab kisi bhi cheez ko अगर हम उसको uh, उस फॉर्म में लाना चाहते हैं सो दैट इट कैन बी कंज्यूम्ड बाय द ह्यूमन बीइंग्स और आप ये कह सकते हैं कि इट इज सुटेबल फॉर ह्यूमन कंजम्पन देन दैट देयर आर सर्टेन काइंड ऑफ प्रोसेसेस विच आर एम्प्लॉयड टू मेक इट फिट फॉर ह्यूमन कंजम्पन सो इन केस ऑफ वीट दो काइंड ऑफ प्रोसेस आर नोन एज वीट मिलिंग लाइक सपोज अगर मुझे भूख लगी है तो आई कैन ईट वीट ग्रेन्स आल्सो सो व्हाई टू गो फॉर दैट इसका फ्लावर बनाया जाए फिर इसका डो बनाया जाए देन चपाती बनाई जाए आई कैन हैव इट लाइक दैट आल्सो बट इट विल नॉट बी डाइजेस्टेड प्रॉपरली बाय माय बॉडी 
so to uh, get it converted into an edible form so we go for certain processes so one of them is the milling so uh, this uh, milling uh, milling we do for two uh, to attain two goals first one is uh, to grind the clean and the tempered cereal and second one is to uh, separate the bran and the germ from the endosperm so that this endosperm can be converted into semolina or it can be converted into flour or it can be converted into middlings so to attain these two aims we can go for this milling so this wheat milling it can be uh, done by two processes one is the traditional milling and another one is the modern milling so now traditional milling is not so uh, practiced so in case of traditional milling what we used to do earlier this chakki was there so in this chakki you may see uh, there are two portions upper one and the lower one so this upper one uh, was not fixed but the lower one is fixed we feed the grain from this uh, central hole and then we uh, move this upper part with the help of this uh, handle and then the grain it gets grinded and we get the flour so in this case the yield is approximately 90 to 95% that means if we are grinding 1 kg of wheat we will get around 900 grams or 950 grams of wheat flour so the advantage of this was that because uh, we are not going to separate that bran and the germ so everything is grinded so uh, in this uh, the uh, the nutrients which are present in the grain they can be retained as it is moreover uh, uh, like uh, uh, the parts like bran we remove the germ we remove they contain some uh, minerals also vitamins also which are important for our human health for good human health for good general health so in the modern milling process we are eliminating these and uh, if you visit some uh, big malls you may see that uh, this bran it is sold in separate packets and it is sold as 300 rupees per kg and when we are doing milling we are removing it and we are buying from the mall and we are mixing it in the wheat flour so that we can reduce weight and the persons you are uh, who want to lose weight they buy that 300 k uh, per kg brand from the malls and we are eliminating that so that ways uh, this traditional milling it was considered a bit superior to the modern milling for the preparation of whole wheat flour so now i will talk about modern milling which is practiced nowadays this in case of the modern milling we take the wheat grains after the wheat grains we clean it after cleaning we go for one process that is tempering and conditioning i will discuss it in detail what we mean by tempering and what is conditioning these are two different terms but they are used uh, together so a bit of process is also different and the conditions are different then these tempered or the conditioned grains these are passed from the break rolls so these break rolls they help in uh, opening the grain in line with the crease and then is the scraping of the endosperm and uh, they uh, help in um, what do you say uh, bran or uh, jo germ hota hai unko alag kar dete hain aur endosperm hamare paas alag se aa jata hai uske baad whatever the fraction we get so that is passed through the reducing rolls it is again a set of rolls as the name suggests reducing reducing means we are going to decrease the size of the particles so from that we will get the flour and then again ye jo reducing rolls hote hain isse bhi hame 
क्या मिलती है वी कैन गेट सीमोलिना ऑल्सो वी कैन गेट फ्लावर ऑल्सो एंड वी कैन गेट सम अमाउंट ऑफ अ बिट ऑफ दैट ब्रैन ऑल्सो सो दैट इज देयर हाउ दिस मॉडर्न मिलिंग इज डन वी विल डिस्कस इट इन डिटेल दिस इज जस्ट अ फ्लो चार्ट टू शो यू हाउ इट इज डन सो फर्स्ट थिंग इज द क्लीनिंग देखिए ऐसा होता है क्लीनिंग के अंदर जो ग्रेन होते हैं उनके अंदर कुछ इम्प्योरिटीज प्रेजेंट होती हैं लाइक इम्प्योरिटीज आर लाइक देर मे बी सम स्टोन दे आर प्रेजेंट देर मे बी सम हे पार्टिकल्स कुछ घास पत्ते कुछ दूसरी तरह के ग्रेन्स भी प्रेजेंट हो सकते हैं और कुछ आयरन के ऑब्जेक्ट्स भी प्रेजेंट हो सकते हैं सो देर आर सर्टन काइंड ऑफ इम्प्योरिटीज विच हैव टू बी रिमूव्ड सो जो भी क्लीनिंग प्रैक्टिस हम इसमें अमल लाते हैं वो बेस्ड होती हैं ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ साइज एंड डायमेंशन ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ द शेप ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ स्पेसिफिक ग्रेविटी ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ देयर मैग्नेटिक प्रॉपर्टीज दैट इज पॉइंटिंग टूवर्ड्स द आयरन ऑब्जेक्ट विच मे बी प्रेजेंट एंड और देर आर सम इम्प्यूरिटीज विच आर क्वाइट फ्राइबल फ्राइबल मीन्स जिनके ऊपर थोड़ा सा ही प्रेशर लगाते ही वो टूट जाते हैं सो ऑन दैट फ्राइबिलिटी या तो ग्रेन फ्राइबल होगा या इम्प्यूरिटीज फ्राइबल होंगी एंड देर मे बी सम श्रंकन कर्नल्स ऑल्सो प्रेजेंट श्रंकन कर्नल्स मीन्स दैट मीन्स देयर एंडोस्पम पोर्शन इज वेरी लेस सो इफ दीज आर इंक्लूडेड ड्यूरिंग द मिलिंग प्रोसेस दे विल रिड्यूस आर मिलिंग ईल्ड सो दैट इज वाई दे हैव टू बी रिमूव्ड सो they may be present sometimes there are broken kernels which are also present so uh, all these factors if present they may um, affect the quality of the milling process or the quality of the end product which is produced or efficiency of the milling process so that is why they are to be removed so dekhiye cleaning to humne kar liya after cleaning as i uh, showed you in the flow diagram the next step is the conditioning or the tempering so now this conditioning and tempering so this uh, process these two process they indicate that some amount of water or the moisture may be added to the grains or it may be removed also removal is very less practiced it is usually added so what is the aim of this conditioning or tempering so this conditioning or tempering it helps in mellowing down the endosperm and it helps in toughening the bran now what will happen because if the bran is not tough so during the break rolls what will happen this bran it will be converted into pieces and it will contaminate the wheat flour which is not desired so that ways we go for conditioning or tempering so that endosperm jo hai wo thoda soft ho jaye aur jo bran hai wo thoda tough ho jaye fir dusra iska kya maqsad rehta hai ki ye jo bran hota hai it absorbs water and after absorbing water it becomes elastic elastic hoga to ye jaldi se tutega nahi aur agar ye tutega nahi to it will not contaminate the flour with the fine particles so that ways we are uh, aiming for two things one is to mellow down the endosperm and toughen the bran and second thing by absorbing water this bran it becomes elastic in nature and that ways its uh, dis disintegration is decreased and it will not contaminate the flour then uh, this uh, mellow endosperm it requires lesser energy input so that ways it is good for the milling of wheat but if excessive moisture is added so it will soften the wheat endosperm more than the desired level and thereby it will break down it will not break down into sharp particles so that ways जो एफिशियंट सीविंग uh, है या हमें इसको छान के इनको पार्टिकल साइज को अकॉर्डिंग टू पार्टिकल साइज वी हैव टू सेपरेट देम दैट विल नॉट बी फिजिबल फॉर अस देन अनदर ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ टेम्परिंग इज टू इक्वेलाइज द हार्डनेस ऑफ द डिफरेंट कर्नल्स सो हाउ इट इज डन एंड 
देखिए दिस इज हाउ इट इज डन लाइक दीज आर दीट ग्रेन वी एड वॉटर now how we decide what quantity of water is to be added first we find out the moisture content of the wheat grains so in case of hard wheat uh, for milling the moisture content should be around 16.5 to 17.5% and in case of soft wheat it should be around 15% so if the moisture content is 11% in the wheat grains then we have to raise it अप टू द डिजायर्ड लेवल अब ये जितना पानी हमें एड करना है सो दैट वी कैन अटेन दैट डिजायर्ड मॉइस्चर कॉन्टेंट इसके लिए ए ए सी सी की बुक्स आती है उनके अंदर एक प्रॉपर टेबल इज देयर अकॉर्डिंग टू द मॉइस्चर कॉन्टेंट ओरिजिनल मॉइस्चर कॉन्टेंट ऑफ द वीट ग्रेन एक फॉर्मूला दिया होता है उसके अंदर हम ये मॉइस्चर कॉन्टेंट की वैल्यूज पुट करते हैं एंड then we get the amount of water which is to be added to the wheat grains for the tempering or the conditioning this is how it is done now i am using both the terms tempering as well as conditioning now what is the difference between these two the main difference is the temperature and the duration conditioning is carried out at elevated temperatures and for shorter duration of time and this tempering it is carried out at room temperature and it requires longer periods that is 18 to 72 hours so that the moisture is distributed equally or it is distributed uniformly so if it is carried out at room temperature then it is known as tempering and if it is carried out at elevated temperature then it is known as conditioning okay so this is the basic difference and this efficiency of tempering or conditioning it depends upon uh, four factors first one what is the initial moisture content then second one it is the temperature and time of the process third one is the moisture distribution in the grain and fourth one is the grain hardness so this moisture uh, when we add water now what will happen suppose we have a container and we have added water then the water will go uh, down in the container so jo lower levels hote hain wahan to pani bahut zyada ho jata hai and it may uh, cause uh, the growth of some molds or yeast in the grain so what we have to do at periodic intervals we have to shake the container so that that water is uniformly distributed and it is uh, each and every grain in the container it acquires the same moisture content so they are at same same level during the milling process so ideal temperature for tempering is 25 degree celsius uh, because if we use higher temperature then there may be some Uh, changes in the starch and the protein characteristic so to avoid that it should be carried out at room temperature but if we use very cold water that is around 15 degrees celsius it is not very cold cold water so uh, what it will do it will uh, fracture the bran because the bran will be more fragile it will fracture and it will lead to the contamination and how we can find that contamination is high we can find out the ash content and if the ash content is more than 0.4% that means bran contamination is there and it cannot be used for bread manufacturing so that is why optimum temperature is required so uh, this table it shows uh, what is the type of heat what is the optimum moisture content and what is the tempering time as you can see soft wheat it is around 15% for hard wheat it is around 16 to 17% durum wheat again 16 to 17.5% because it is a very hard wheat variety so uh next is uh, breaking or break system abhi tak koi problem tempering or conditioning mein no ma'am clear hai aapko yes ma'am okay so uh breaking or break system 
जैसे कि आपको एज द नेम सजेस्ट ब्रेकिंग ब्रेकिंग मीन्स तोड़ना सो so, हमें क्या करना है इसको वी हैव टू ओपन द ग्रेन फ्रॉम द क्रीज एंड वी हैव टू स्क्रैप द एंडोस्पम सो दैट इज ब्रेकिंग और द ब्रेक सिस्टम इन द मिल देर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ सिस्टम प्रेजेंट वन इज द ब्रेक सिस्टम एंड अनदर वन इज द रिड्यूसिंग रोल्स और इनको हम ब्रेक सिस्टम को ब्रेक रोल्स भी बोल सकते हैं एंड अनदर वन इज द रिड्यूसिंग रोल्स सो इन ब्रेक रोल्स वट वी डू इज वी ओपन अप द ग्रेन वी स्क्रैप द एंडोस्पर्म एंड वी जो भी ब्रांड है जर्म है और एंडोस्पर्म है उनको अलग कर देते हैं दैट इज डन इन द ब्रेक सिस्टम फिर उसके बाद वट एवर वी गेट फ्रॉम द ब्रेक सिस्टम दैट इज पास थ्रू द रिड्यूसिंग रोल्स एंड इन रिड्यूसिंग रोल्स वी डिक्रीज द साइज ऑफ द पार्टिकल्स सो that is basically uh, that is the basic fundamental um, process which we carry out and how it is done we are going to discuss that now first thing jo uh, break rolls hote hain they are corrugated rolls corrugations ka matlab hota hai like this see these are corrugated rolls you can see the striations on these rolls so these are corrugated this is a wheat mill and here you can see wheat it comes through a hopper then there is a set of break rolls that will help in achieving the opening of the grains uh, scraping of endosperm and separation of bran germ and the semolina and a bit amount of the flour also then uh, the semolina which is obtained it is passed through the reducing rolls so again there is a set of reducing rolls which help in reducing the size of the semolina particles so that we can get the refined flour so this is how it is done and these are the corrugated rolls so that means there are flutes which are present on it theek hai so <clears throat> first thing uh whatever the corrugated rolls are present there is a small gap between them so that uh, the grains can pass through them and they may open up so for that reason there is a space and and for that reason also there are corrugations so that it can be opened uh, easily and we can get uh, good chunks of endosperm for that purpose these kind of rolls are being designed theek okay. hai next thing ki if we are going for soft wheat so because these are soft and they have less and uh, less dense endosperm the percentage of flour extracted from the breaks it will be higher than that from the hard or the durum wheat the reason being because hard or durum wheat they require more energy input to get grinded into very fine particles of flour but in case of soft wheat flour because the bond between the starch and the protein which are present in endosperm is not so strong so that ways they can be easily grinded without lot of energy input so that is why the ex Uh, percentage of flour flour that is extracted from the break rolls in case of soft wheat it will be higher as compared to the hard wheat now uh, the main objective of the break roll is to open the kernel the shape and the depth of the first break roll corrugation should be such that the kernel fits into it first thing it will fit and thereafter the kernels are opened exactly at the crease by the fast moving roll then the second break roll and the subsequent break rolls they will scrap the endosperm from the bran as the bran flakes get smaller towards the final breaking stages the endosperm layer attached to it becomes thinner gradually smaller corrugations or large number of corrugations per inch of roll surface are used pehle jo corrugations hoti hain wo thodi spaced hoti hain uske baad dheere 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 fine corrugations hoti jati hain because we now we have to scrap the endosperm grain to open hum kar chuke hain first break roll se hi 
easily. So this I have already shown you. And this is a very simple diagram. As you may see uh, from above, it is the clean weight which is coming. Then it is coming down, brake rolls. Then the sieves are there. So sieve se hame kya milega? Bran is there. Some wheat feed will be there. And then is the wheat germ. And a little bit amount of wheat flour will also be produced. Right? Fir hum kya karenge? Jo hamare paas simolina aai hai. Usko we will pass through the reduction rolls up to 12 times. It is passed. But hum ye karte hai. Teen se char bar pass karte hai. Fir usko sieve karte hai. Or sieve karne ke baad. Again we will get this wheat germ, wheat feed and the bran. So this is how the milling process is carried out. So this is again a diagram and you may see these break rolls, they have corrugations and these reduction rolls, they are very smooth. Up next, we will discuss in next class. So if you have any questions or queries, you may ask me please. Uh, yeah, ma'am, uh, I wanted to ask uh, once there was a question in an exam that what is the distance between these brake rolls? How uh, many millimeter? Can you please let us know? That we, I will tell you. I will tell you that uh, 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 what you, that is the speed differential also. Differential speed. Yes. I am going to discuss that. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh -huh. वो आपका इसमें जब रिडक्शन में बताऊंगी ना आपको कि वो कितनी स्पीड से चलते हैं ज्यादा स्पीड yes. होती है कम होती है तो प्रेशर भी कम ज्यादा होता है इट इज इनवर्सली प्रोपोर्शनल सो दैट आई स्पीड डिफरेंशियल आई विल डिस्कस विद यू ओके ओके हां 1.5 is to 1 या yeah, 1.15 तो कुछ यस सम मिलीमीटर यस देयर वाज अ क्वेश्चन ऑन दिस आई आई डोंट नो सो आई आई स्किप दैट क्वेश्चन नो प्रॉब्लम आई एम आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस इट ओके ओके थैंक यू या Anything else which you want to ask? आज का बच्चों समझ में आ गया सारा या अभी भी कुछ रह गया है जो आज मैम excuse me मैम हाँ बेटा बोलो मैम can you give questions also on based on this topic हाँ बेटा I will try I will provide you uh, I think from Monday or Tuesday, tak, I will provide you the questions if feasible for me. Okay. Huh. Yeah. Otherwise, we can ask questions after lecture so that we will be more attentive in the class. That I think we can uh, be attentive. Okay, you have to go back to the attention. So, I so, मुझे फिर अब की बार से मैं ध्यान रखूंगी। I will ask you the questions in between also। मैं last में होगा कि questions हैं मतलब बाकी lectures में भी ऐसे ही होते हैं। हम जितने के lectures बाद में पंच questions अगर या मैं तो थोड़ा सो थोड़ा attractive वो मतलब लगता है lecture भी। हम्म 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 no problem। मैं interest बना रहता है थोड़ा सा। ठीक है ठीक है ठीक है so I will ask questions in between also. No problem. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. With the, I guess seven minutes, so you can still ask questions. You'll get an idea of how much we have understood till now. So, beta, aap hi bata dijiye mujhe, what is the objective of tempering? Ma'am, no, the objective of tempering is to uh, adjustment of uh, uh, water content prior milling. Anything else? Only the adjustment of water? Adjustment of moisture. Okay, it's water moisture. It's one and the same thing. Yeah. Anything yeah. else which I told you? To prevent brand to prevent brand contamination in the floor. How we will prevent the brand contamination? Like tempering, if we add water to the grains, what it will do? It will mellow the endospin and toughen the brand. Yes. You yeah, may right. tell, uh, yes, because it will make, uh, because the bran, it is rich in fiber. So it is going to absorb water and because of absorption of water, it will become elastic. 
yes or, it will become leathery and will not yes, disintegrate yes it will not so disintegrate I mean, and thereby yeah. it will prevent uh, the uh, yes. now what is the difference between the brown rice and the paddy one paddy is with the uh, hull no uh, paddy is with the hull covering and uh, uh, this uh, brown rice uh, is after removing the hull but uh, with the bran layer bran and a uh, uh, bran and endosperm bran yeah. endosperm and germ germ and germ also yes and germ also okay now uh, i told you about the types of endosperm which are present in maize ma'am it's a uh, type of endosperm hmm. Okay. Ma'am, one is the floury, floral, and horny. Horny endosperm, and uh, the second one is the floury endosperm. Yes. Okay. So, what is the difference between these two? One is the horny one is the hard one. One is hard, one is soft. Soft. Okay. So, what is preferred? We should prefer hard one or the soft one. Soft one. Okay. नहीं हार्ड वन इज प्रेफर्ड फॉर मिलिंग सो इट इज द हार्ड वन विच इज प्रेफर्ड फॉर मिलिंग नॉट द सॉफ्ट वन ओके सो द पोर्शन ऑफ दैट हॉर्नी एंडोस्पर्म इट शुड बी मोर एज कंपेयर टू द सॉफ्टर वन एनी डिफरेंस बिटवीन द कंपोजिशन ऑफ दीज टू Yes, ma'am. Softer one is present in less quantity uh, comparatively to the hard uh, horny. No, 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 no. Harder one is in less quantity and softer one is in more quantity. No, no. Protein content, ma'am. No. Fat content. No. Uh, the cells. Anything yes, about? Oh yes. Yes, tightly and packed and loosely packed. packed. Yes, the they are tightly packed, packed and they are loosely, loosely packed. packed. Okay. And uh, one thing more, there was in structure of maize grain that was different from other grains. What was that? Because of two endosperm. Ah, uh, okay. Another thing. The tip cap was present. Yes, there is tip cap which is present in maize, and in all other grains it was not present. So that was the difference between these. Okay. Ah, uh, and ah, uh, uh, what is the name given to the protein of rice? It's glutenin. 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 Lin or nin. Lin. Lin. L I N. L I N. It is L I N. That is glute lin. And uh, maize protein. What's the name? Maize. And basmati rice. Me, jo apka flavoring compound hai, wo kaun sa hai? Gamma forty five. Or re 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 re. Gamma forty five. Where did it come from? Uh, one tricyl. Two uh, acetyl pyrroline. Yes, it two is two. Yes, yes, it is two acetyl pyrroline, two acetyl one pyrroline. It is, I think, it is one pyrroline. And ये जो grains होते हैं, cereal grains, they are deficient in which uh, essential amino acids? And lysine and tryptophan. Lysine. Lysine, tryptophan, methionine. Methionine, they lack or they are rich in methionine? They are rich in methionine. they are rich in methionine and they lack lysine and tryptophan yes so they should be taken in combination with which food group like rice and pulses and grains and pulses legumes yes. cereals they are uh, deficient in lysine tryptophan and methionine also yes yeah and they are rich in uh, sulfur containing amino acids cysteine and methionine. Uh, methionine which is lacking in pulses pulses yes so that is why they should be taken in combination like hum dal chawal hum fermented foods ke andar bhi ye uh, idli banate hain dosa banate hain iske andar bhi dal chawal hi hota hai so that is the basic reason because it makes a complete food so for that reason it is taken okay mm -hmm. जो सिंगल सीडेड फ्रूट होता है उसका क्या नाम होता है इट इज नोन एज 
अच्छा मुझे ये बताओ कि ये जो टेट्राप्लॉइड जो वीट होती है उसके अंदर कितने नंबर ऑफ क्रोमोसोम्स होते हैं फोर मैम सेवन इंटू फोर ट्वेंटी एट प्रिपेयर कर लेना एंड देन नेक्स्ट टाइम फर्स्ट आई विल आस्क क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम वट एवर आई हैव टॉट यू टूडे एंड देन वी विल कैरी ऑन Oh thank you so okay. much ma'am all the best good night thank you ma'am thank you so much yeah okay. ma'am can you share the ppt with sir yes i will do okay ma'am yeah